The pitch ability test is a serious test and can be frustrating for beginners. In fact, it is a trailblazer on the way to absolute pitch. And yet, it also tests the most basic music skills. Before I explain why this is the case, let me introduce the pitch ability test. Opening the pitch ability test program brings up the following screen. When you start the test for the first time, you are asked to select four notes. In subsequent tests, the selected notes are automatically preloaded. Whenever you want to select or change the notes, click the Select Notes button. In the Note Selection dialog box, select four notes you can sing well and comfortably. In this demo for the pitch ability test, I will select the first four notes of the C major scale. When you are done selecting the notes, click Go. Now all you have to do is select the delay time, for which you want to take the test. The delay time, or period of silence, is the time, between hearing the note, and when you start to reproduce it by singing or humming. For demonstration purposes I'll leave a brief silent period to the proposed default of 8 seconds. Now let me show you the test, I will comment it afterwards. The test takes about 40 seconds. Relax and be patient, this is not an action thriller. When all notes have been tested, there is a pause, and an overview of your performance for the chosen delay time will be displayed. If you pass the test for all four notes, then the test isn't finished yet. You can continue the assessment with a longer silent period. As long as you continue passing you can continue with longer silent periods. But if you increase the silent period, for example, to 10 seconds and you fail in reproducing one of the notes in the test, then you are blocked from increasing the time delay and not allowed to continue. Your pitch ability then becomes the longest silent period you have completed, in this case 8. This procedure is similar to the high jump in sports, where you keep adjusting your targeted goal and continue until you cannot complete a given target. Therefore, you should select your silence duration with care. If you start with a duration that is too short it may fatigue your voice, hindering you in reaching your best performance. If you start with a duration that is too long, you run the risk of achieving no result at all. Now, let me walk you through the first note again with some comments. The test starts by flashing the number of notes you still have to do. On the bottom you see the progression of the time along this line. The test starts with a very brief pause so you can focus your mind on the test. Next, you hear the note you must afterwards match by singing or humming. Listen carefully and prepare to take over the pitch with your voice. After the note has finished playing, the silent period starts. However, you don't have to be silent yet. The test allows you to sing the note immediately after it has sounded. I recommend that you use these two seconds to adjust your vocal muscles, and to refresh the internalized muscle positions. Thus, this period is labeled, training. During this period the input volume is displayed, so you can adjust your position to the microphone, if necessary.
When the vertical bar reaches the end of the training bar, the true silent period begins. No more sounds are allowed. Depending on the silent iteration period you have chosen, a longer pause follows. Five seconds before your pitch memory is tested, you hear a white noise. You are again allowed to break the silence. In addition, a horizontal bar labeled, prepare, appears. The vertical countdown bar shows you the remaining time until you have to reproduce the pitch. Begin singing before the actual test time starts. In this way you will have time to position your vocal muscles correctly for the test evaluation. No visual feedback is given during this preparation phase. When the countdown reaches zero, the test evaluates your singing of the memorized pitch. Again, only the input volume is shown. After a second elapses, a red bar appears. This red bar tells you that the evaluation time has finished. The test ends after two seconds. A brief evaluation for the note in test is shown in the feedback screen. The feedback screen shows you the pitch curve for the tested note. The pitch ability test allows a maximum deviation of 50 cents from the target pitch. The yellow area illustrates the accepted range. The required accuracy for the mean is 25 cents. In this demo I have passed the test for the note C4 with a mean deviation of minus 1 cent. If you use the training period to sing, you will also see the precision of your pitch takeover. The pitch takeover is not calculated from the beginning but taken from the end of the training phase. This is by intention. This way you get time to adjust your vocal cords without overlapping with the reference sound. The idea is that you start singing after you have listened to the pitched sound. And in this way must internalize the pitch. Why? Because if you start singing when the pitch is playing, you will adjust your vocal cords by coordinating the muscles orally. That is okay in the beginning. But later you should start recalling muscle positions from internalized memorizations. The process of recalling internalized pitches, I call, the transition from oral to mental pitch control. If your takeover is not accurate enough, you should work on the precision takeover. Do this before trying to increase the silent period. After the silent period, the test itself shows the accuracy of your memory task. The feedback screen displays for about a second, then the test automatically continues with the remaining three notes. When the test has evaluated all the sung notes, an overview of your performance is displayed. For each note the deviation and variance is shown. If you passed all four notes, then your current pitch ability in seconds is shown. You are also allowed to continue the test by setting a higher goal. If you fail in executing one of the notes, the test finishes and your best pitch ability is displayed. If you fail a note with your starting duration of silence, then, of course, no score can be given. Now, because the test time is open-ended, but we don't have unlimited time for it. I have defined a reference point, Felix's pitch point. Felix's pitch point appears at 4 minutes. 4 minutes because that way testing the four notes takes less than 20 minutes. And, usually, if you can correctly remember pitches, without cheating, after four minutes, you can also remember them after an hour. Thus the pitch ability test says a lot more about your pitch ability than, simply guessing at whether or not you have absolute pitch. Or simply knowing, you do not have absolute pitch. In addition, the pitch ability test indicator lets you measure, and therefore train and improve this ability. To train this ability, I have developed the program Same Pitch Please. Same Pitch Please helps you find the pitches of the notes you remember and reproduce best. For example, it starts with a larger collection of notes, and abandons temporarily those notes you have the most problems reproducing and remembering. Because the brain also uses relative pitch concepts to recall pitches, same pitch please focuses for a while on the one note you can remember and reproduce best. Thereafter, the program returns to the original collection of notes in reverse order. When you get to where the fourth note reappears, you have reached Felix's pitch point. Same pitch please continues after Felix's pitch point. However, 
Keep in mind that after Felix's pitch point the training time exceeds 20 minutes. Same pitch please also gives you immediate pitch feedback. In this way, you can see how precisely you are reproducing the pitch. And thus some idea of how well you are taking over a pitch. This real-time visual pitch control gives you a chance to correct the takeover of the pitch on the fly. Let me now address my two earlier claims, those I made at the beginning of this video. First, why is the pitch ability test a trailblazer for learning absolute pitch? If you look up the term absolute pitch, often called perfect pitch, in Wikipedia, a somewhat overwhelming list appears of what you must be able to execute to achieve it. Yes, if you look at this list, it is full of musical terms. Some of you probably don't even know what a key in music is. True, if you want to acquire perfect pitch you must study keys, chord names, pitch names, and so on. And you only can claim that you possess perfect pitch if you fulfill all the criteria. But there is nothing in between these criteria that says, for example, you have reached a score of 90 out of 100 for perfect pitch. The lack of a continuous measure makes the process of achieving perfect pitch even more difficult. However, if you analyze the required skills, one stands out. Accurately singing a named pitch without a reference tone. Since perfect pitch is a catchphrase with no generally accepted specification, I have decided to introduce the pitch ability test. The test allows you to technically measure your absolute pitch ability. By measuring your current pitch matching and pitch retention ability, the pitch ability test lets you work directly towards the goal of improving these abilities. Since the test allows you to measure the most important skill of absolute pitch, to accurately sing a named pitch without a reference tone, it is a trailblazer for acquiring absolute pitch. Absolute pitch requires recalling pitches accurately even after a day, which is way beyond Felix's pitch point at 4 minutes. Second, why is the pitch ability test an assessment of basic music skills? For one, the requirement of singing directly measures your ability to match and take over a pitch. By letting you reproduce a given pitch any deviation from the original tone is easy to measure. To measure the precision takeover of the pitch is very useful. Since without it, you are not able to sing a song in a required key. To be able to match a pitch, independent of any tuning system, is the essential skill for making music in a group. And therefore is a basic music skill. Harmony, for example, can only be achieved if the instruments are synchronized pitch-wise. For another, the pitch ability test measures how long you can retain a pitch accurately. Let me explain. In many songs, the first tone is the same as the last tone, illustrating the idea of a central or home key. So individual tones of a melody are linked together through this common tone. Called the tonic. Chords are also built around a tonic pitch. So, to keep a pitch in mind throughout a piece also forms a basic music skill. The longer you can keep a pitch accurately in mind, the better the chances you will retain the tonic pitch throughout a piece. Thus, the pitch ability test, even so intended for perfect pitch measurement, is also very useful for beginners. But, since the test may be difficult for beginners, we strongly recommend using our training program Same Pitch Please. Same Pitch Please gives immediate pitch feedback and helps to improve taking over of the pitch. Same Pitch Please also trains you to retain a pitch accurately for longer durations. In contrast to the pitch ability test, the Same Pitch Please program allows larger pitch deviations in the beginning, and thus guides you to critical points you can observe and improve. At the end of this video, Three remarks. First, a helpful tip. Use self syllables for easier pitch association. Second, an implication. Unlike physical limits, mental limits are often more difficult to determine. This is because the mind is complex and reacts to actual circumstances. Given this, the results of the test may vary, even be depending on our mood while taking the test. Unfortunately, we tend to overestimate our best results and believe that we can continue improving from the best result. In many cases this leads to a sense of failure and we give up. We don't trust varying results 
and thus, may discredit the test procedure. Yet, if we set our limit low enough, we will consistently and reliably succeed. So remain cautiously optimistic, and go slowly. Just because mental activity, compared to physical activity, often seems effortless, doesn't mean you can leapfrog over fragile achievements. Always start with a limit that you can pass successfully and build up to a solid achievable point, then try to push this limit. Third, an explanation. Why does the pitch ability test use the delay time as an indicator? The pitch ability test narrows absolute pitch down to the essence, remembering and producing a pitch. Since the immediate, accurate reproduction of a pitch in most cases is easier to learn, accuracy is seldom the killer criteria for absolute pitch. Therefore, I have defined the time in seconds as the indicator for the pitch ability test. Now, I hope that the direct measuring of your pitch ability allows you to move on, on the road to absolute or perfect pitch.